Hey guys, what's up? Slider here with the Quester, and I am here as always with Brandon. That way. Hey guys. This way. This way. <laughs> I, I forgot where you were. <laughs> anyway, we are going to be discussing the uh, recent BBC series that is uh, airing on Amazon Prime for us, Good Omens, with uh, David Tennant and Michael Sheen. Uh, David Tennant is... Uh, most widely known from his grand stint in, as Doctor Who. Um, he was in this little uh, indie, crappy uh, franchise called Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> and uh, he was also the Purple Man in Jessica Jones. Michael Sheen. I know I've seen him in other things, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any of them. What about Neither you, Brandon? I, uh, <laughs> I, I know I've seen him, but from where, I, I couldn't place it off the top of my head, like you said. Yeah, I, I, I should have looked that up before we started. But anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, basically this is the story of an angel and a demon that have to work together in order to keep Armageddon from occurring. Um, the Antichrist is now on Earth, and things are in motion, and they are trying to keep things from uh, going down that road because heaven and hell want war, but... Uh, the angel and demon have been on Earth long enough to like it, and they want to stay where they are. So, uh, with that, it starts off with the uh, traditional Adam and Eve story, where uh, Adam and Eve are in the garden, and they get uh, tempted by the snake. Uh, in this case, the snake is represented by Crowley. Um, and, uh, of course, he gets her to bite the apple. What happens next? Obviously, Adam bites the apple, and they get expunged from uh, the garden. And that's when we actually meet the angel and the demon Crowley and Azir 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 Fail. Azir Fail. Uh and uh, uh they're obviously represented here by these two and they that begins the relationship over the millennia from the time the earth was created up until present day. Um and then uh Brandon, you want to go ahead and uh, take over? So the, the the whole thing is Crowley or Crawley at the time. Uh, Crawley gave this apple, uh, to, you know, or I'm sorry, not gave, convinced Eve to take an apple. Um, Sarah fails part in it is when Adam and Eve decide to leave the garden. Um, Eve is pregnant already, and he couldn't send them away without anything. So he gave his flaming sword to Adam. Um, and then in the next very next scene, you see Crawley and Aziraphale talking, uh, overlooking the desert. And you, you can't see it here, but you also see Adam slaying a lion with his fire sword. Um, well, fighting uh, a lion anyway. Well, well, you you hear the slaying, I guess. You don't see the slaying. You hear it. Um, but I really liked the shot that they did of them overlooking the desert. Um, it, it kind of put into perspective that Crawley, Crowley uh, is a fallen angel. Um, I, I just, I thought it was, the shot was well done. Talking about them overlooking the desert? Yeah. Um, there's actually a little scene right after this with, that they don't, uh, we don't have here, but where it starts to rain at the garden and Aziraphale actually puts his wing out over Crawley to keep him from getting wet. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did notice that as well, and that's really the beginning of their long 6,000 year relationship. Right. Um, and uh, it's actually it's the two of them together are, are, are really, they have good chemistry on screen. Um, like I, I really enjoy watching them and I think they're both really good actors. Um, so it works out really well. They have a voiceover from God and God is saying that the earth is 6,000 years old. Kind of like creationists would. Um, so uh, we see them throughout history in different parts uh, attending uh, different events and uh, oh there was one thing you know what I should have got a screen capture of this where they're at the uh, the ark and uh, they see a unicorn that's... running away <laughs> I don't think that's this episode that wasn't you're right that wasn't this episode I'm a little bit ahead then of, of uh, <laughs> other people I want to say because I, I don't remember that <laughs> um, uh... but uh but at any rate, uh, so we, we see them throughout history, and uh, that brings us up to, uh, to present day where, well, actually, no, I guess it'd be the 80s when uh, he shows, when the Antichrist finally makes it to Earth. 
Or is it ni- no, 90. 90. 92? It would be, no, it would be... 11 mid, years. It would be mid-2000s. Mid-2000s, you're right, you're right, you're right. Learn how to math, please. No, I can't math. Um, it, I, I, I thought that it was interesting that Crowley was given the Antichrist. Um, and when they first introduce that scene, uh, it's another demon uh, carrying a basket and then... Uh, having or handing it over to to Crowley, uh, and Crowley was kind of surprised by the fact that he was given this task. Um, of course, his the, the task is to swap out an actual baby with the Antichrist, and from there it gets a little bit messed up. There's an order of satanic nuns, and which I thought was fantastic, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, there, do you remember the Order of the Chattering something? Oh, God. I, sh- I should have written the full name down. It, it was an unnecessarily long name. Yes. Um, and so we actually have them going through with the plan of what they're going to do, who's doing what, how long it's going to take, where they're going to send the different nuns to have different jobs, and uh, how they're going to swap out the baby. The uh, catch is that at that same time, another couple comes in to give birth and uh, just messes up the whole works. And uh, uh, and that's when we get the uh, the actual switching of the baby out. Yeah. Um, so Crowley shows up at this at this place, uh, this this demonic nun church and hands the basket to um, the the black nun that we have on the right. And when he does this, she ends up bringing it to the incorrect room, unbeknownst to to them, really, uh, or to, to Crowley at the time. Um, and then there is a scene where she is she has just swapped it out, and another nun comes in to check on her and the task that she's doing, and they do this kind of like winking thing, uh, like oh yeah, like you, you you did you got the right baby switched and and it's supposed to be with this couple over here, and they entirely missed misread each other's winks, um, which was hilariously done. Yeah, and uh, the way it's being described in the episode, it's a card uh, a game of three card Monty, uh, three card Monty being the. Uh, the shell game, basically, where you have to spot the card and they, they shuffle the cards back and forth supposed to guess which one's which. Um, obviously, everyone loses at this game in this in this scene uh, because they end up swapping out the wrong baby. And uh, then after the babies are swapped out and sent home, they send the Antichrist home with a couple that lives in a small village in England. Um, and then the... Uh, the well, let's, let's not forget they I, I don't remember if it was a different set of nuns or if it was Crowley uh, had the one couple that they thought had the Antichrist named their child and they ended up naming him Warlock yes um, and th- those are the same nuns and what uh, well, the way this was supposed to go down was the child was supposed to go with the uh, parents the American the, the American ambassadors that were in England, except the uh, husband was actually in Washington uh, on assignment when she went into labor. So she ended up giving up, giving birth by herself. And that's when the nuns talked her in, talked, uh, yeah, talked the mother into naming the child Warlock, saying it was a good, oh, uh, a good old English name. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Why not? Um, because of, of, of course, the, the first day we're trying to get them, get them to name him Damien. Um, and uh, I forget what their last name was, but the last name also started with a D. And she was like, no, that's too alliterative. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then we switch back over to the actual Antichrist and uh, the parents that they, they put him with. And yeah. uh, they're, again, trying to get them to name the baby Damien. And he, he's just like, no, I was looking for something more simple. Um, so they go with Adam. And hence... We go from Black Adam in creation to White Adam being the Antichrist. The baby gets del- you know, delivered and sent home, etc. Uh, then and Aziraphale get together and 
they decide that they need to drink because the end of the world has essentially begun now. Yes. Um, it will happen in 11 years' time. And so they, they're they in love with humanity. They, they like going out to eat. They like seeing people. They like all the things that humanity has created. Um, and so we see them uh, start drinking, and uh, Crowley is... is d- trying to talk about like oh man what dolphins have such big brains and 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 so do whales and then Aziraphale is talking about how the kraken will rise up and the sea will boil and that's when uh, Crowley is like well you know that's the whole point isn't it everything will be destroyed and he starts to come up with this idea that he and Aziraphale should watch over this child to get him to not destroy the world. Uh, and they... <laughs> Aziraphale really reluctantly agrees. Um, he was kind of tricked into it because Crowley's like, well, he's like, you'd have to do your part as being a good guy. If, if I'm there, you'll have to, to be there to, to you know keep him on track. And so they do, and... <laughs> so, Crowley decides to be a nanny, uh, yes. which, which, oh man, that that was that was a great scene when he knocks on the door. I have to believe that David Tennant did that as a, an homage to Mrs. Doubtfire. You think? Because I mean, it just, it, I mean, she's he's obviously playing the prim, uh, the British nanny, you know, but uh, just the 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 whole dressing up the the uh, the way he speaks. Um, I, demonic I, I thought, nanny. Well, yeah, a, dem- a demonic Mrs. Doubtfire. Sure, why not? Because <laughs> like, cause, cause the, the, the songs that he would sing to, to Warlock are a little ridiculous. Go to sleep, dream of pain, dream of blood <laughs> and, and destruction. And uh, at the, the uh, Warlock is like, the gardener says I should never do any of those <laughs> things, especially destroy the world. <laughs> um, and, and well, what's kind of interesting is that Warlock is this, you know, this kid of, of an, like an American ambassador or, or whatever his actual job is with the U.S. government. Um, the kid's a brat, but obviously not evil. Well, uh, I guess. If that's what you want to... I mean, I, I think all children are inherently evil, but... Uh... Well, yeah, that's, that, that's a you. <laughs> Um, but uh, he's also, you know, he's he's brought up uh, in a place of privilege. Um, you know, he's got a big True. house. He's you know got a nanny, that, a gardener. Which, which, yeah, that's why he he's a brat. Not necessarily because of anything Crowley did. He's just a brat because he's rich. Right. Um, and so uh, we see the uh, the them influ- the plan is one of them is going to try to influence them to be good. The other one's going to try to influence them to be evil. And the net result should be a normal person, not evil or good. Yes. Okay. And uh, I don't know if they fail. <laughs> because he at his 11th birthday party, he's a little shit. And all of his friends are little shits. To be fair, it, you know, Aziraphale's magic tricks, I'm sorry, magic tricks suck. Yeah, they so were pretty I, bad. I, I can't blame some of the kids for getting upset. Now, mind you, I'm not saying to act the way they did. Oh, I would have been handing out ass weapons. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a, 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 a zero fail uh, is just not good at magic tricks. And as Curly said, he can do actual magic. He probably should have done actual magic, uh, at least to entertain them more. Um, but either way... Um, the end result was a a food fight started, and uh, Aziraphale and Crowley leave the party because they didn't want to be a part of that, and it was a mess. Um, and when they leave is when they find out that there's been a fuck-up. And because they're expecting a hellhound to show up for the kid at his 11th birthday. And there's no dog. So they decide that they need to go see their respective people. 
Well, uh, you missed one little important thing. Crowley actually feels when the dog gets named, which is the trigger uh, for the Antichrist coming into his power. But it's not at the party where the child that they believe the Antichrist is. And that's when they realize they screwed up. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, so they walk up, uh, they're, they're going to their head offices and, uh, it's kind of interesting. There are multiple ways to get to the head office, but when it's something formal like this, they have to come in through the front entrance. Yeah. The main entrance. <laughs> yeah. The main entrance. Right. So you see them walking into the building, right? But then I thought that was super neat. You know, one of them is taking an escalator up. The other one's taking an escalator down, but... Well. Sort of not really an escalator. The escalator <laughs> looks like it still goes up, but he goes into the floor. He goes into the floor, and what you see is his reflection, that a reflection of him that's not there. But it, it, it's, it was a neat camera trick. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I, I thought it was pretty well done. I liked it a lot. Um, and so uh, they uh, go, and, and we see uh, the choir of angels, if you will, where Aziraphale is giving his report. Um, and uh, I think, is this the first time we see John Hamm? No, they they had they showed um, Gabriel earlier in the episode when he finds Aziraphale eating sushi, I believe. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, but that was kind of a brief introduction. Um, this was an introduction to basically the four angels that are are over Aziraphale, um, and they they really don't like him much. He, they all agree that he's been on Earth too long. Um, you know, things like that. And he's gone and, native. Yeah, he's, he's gone native. Although, Gabriel's kind of an asshole. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, which makes it a perfect role for John Hamm. He plays that, that kind of the character real well. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll, we'll see this uh, uh, in... Uh, this is the uh, meeting in Hell, right? And so uh, we have the demons there. And what were the demon names, Brandon? Um, well, you have Beelzebub with the flies on uh, the left there. You've got um, Dagon, the Lord of Flies, just to the left of Crowley. And then you have Haster and uh, Liger uh, in the middle. I think uh, Haster is the, is, is the white guy with the frog thing on its head. Um, and uh, Liger's uh, another Duke of Hell uh, in the middle there. Um, he also has some kind... Uh, maybe that's maybe it's it's a it's a crown because they're both dukes. Maybe that's why they have those things on their heads. Oh, um, well, the interesting thing about those is they're alive, um, and they're not at, like it's not like a frog like you and I would see. It's like formed to his head. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other one is a like an iguana, also formed to his head. Um, and one of the things I had uh, brought up earlier was. Uh, Kind of, this is kind of an testament to the attention to detail that they had when making the show because uh, they were having a conversation and at one point Crowley asks a question and the answer is yes. The demon answers yes, but he doesn't move. However, the lizard nods his head. <laughs> yeah. right? So I thought that was a pretty cool little you know thing that they just kind of threw in there. Um, uh, but uh, so that's when we kind of... Meet all of their bosses, if you will, um, like who, who they report to, um, and uh, this is, here's these, a better one. Yeah, I would say these two are, are pretty much the over even the other three, uh, respectively. Uh, you know, Gabriel over uh, what is it, Uriel, Michael, and uh, S Sandal Fawn. Sandal Fawn, yeah. Um, so yeah, these are are definitely a step above them, um, and. You know, it's probably a, a, a kind of like a foreshadowing of things to come. Uh, so I feel like these two will be more heavily involved as the show goes on. Um, uh, hopefully, if you know we get you know seasons two and three, etc. Um, I'm hoping to see a lot more, especially out of John John Hamm's character. Beelzebub was was there, but uh, yeah, that, didn't have as big of a role yeah, as John Hamm did. The character did nothing for me, really. Um, John Hamm's character, even though he wasn't, I, I mean, they probably had about the same amount of screen time, but John Hamm is just a, such a greater presence. Um, you know, it's like every time he was on screen, you took note of him being on screen. Beelzebub was just kind of there. Um, and, and I mean, and that's just like a, from a character performance, uh, in, in my opinion. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure we're going to get a lot more from them because, uh, you know, they're, they are the rulers of heaven and hell, right? <laughs> or, or the administrators, if you will. Um, but, uh, so that's when they realize they, they, they have this, uh, epiphany that something's gone wrong and they, they make their reports. And so Aziraphale well, and Crawley have, they both pretend like there's nothing wrong though. Right, right, right. They, they act like nothing's happened because again, they don't want to be recalled. They, like you said, they're in love with, with humanity. They want to stay down here, um, or up here, uh, <laughs> depending on who you're talking about. Um, but, uh. Uh, There was something you wanted to point out, Brandon? Yeah, so one thing I noticed um, is every time – well, I'll I'll name one exception, but I'll go into that in a second. Every time that we see uh, Aziraphale and Crowley together, um, at least when they're sitting, Crowley is always on the right and Aziraphale always on the left. Um, The only exception was when they got into Crowley's car, and that's because – it's Crowley's car and he's driving and, you know, England steering wheel on the other side kind of thing. Right. Um, and, uh, so this is when they're discussing what they're going to do. Like now, now that they realize they fucked up what they're going to do about it. Um, and so there's, uh, uh, they basically realize that they're going to have to, uh, uh, find this kid because this is warlock by the way. And this is the one that they thought was uh, the Antichrist, right? When, in fact, we have 11-year-old Adam. And it's on 11-year-old Adam's birthday when he comes across, when the Hellhound is actually uh, unleashed and looking for him. And right as he finds him, something really (laughs) cute or comical, in in my opinion, uh, happens. Because uh, as this, this ginormous, like, this nasty beast comes running up, uh, what Adam says is, I don't want a big dog. Well, there, there's a little more to it than that. So Adam's in the woods playing with his friends. Um, and and God's narrating this part and saying that, you know, Adam always comes up with the best games for them, et, et cetera. And so, you know, he's telling his friends, it's like, I really want a dog for my birthday. And they're like, oh, you're not just going to get a dog just because you want him. And he's like, but he's like, I will. He's like, I, he's like, I've always wanted a dog. And then, yeah, like you said, like the, the dog's basically watching him. And as the narration continues, it says the naming, the naming is important because it will define the hellhound's role of things to come. Right. So, uh, and uh, the one on the left here, this is the hellhound as we know him when he's unleashed. And then... They ask him, well, if you had this dog, what would you name him? He's like, I think I'll just call him Dog. Yeah, he's like, he's like that'll <laughs> simplify things, a name yeah. like that. And we get what's on the right. Uh, <laughs> and I just thought, this shot right here, d- d- I laughed out loud. That little dog with the red demon eyes is perfect. <laughs> Although it only stays red demon eyes for, like, a couple seconds. Yeah, no, he's, he's a demon... It, well, he's basically he transforms into this little dog, and then his eyes turn normal. Yep. Um, but I actually I absolutely loved that scene, and that's kind of where this episode closes out. Um, we we know that the boy has uh, come is coming into his power because the Hellhound has found him, and Crawley and Aziraphale have no idea where he is. Um, and that's where we left off, and that's that's the opening episode of uh, Good Omens. I really, really like this show so far. Um, and like I said, I'm a little ahead of Brandon. I sort of let that slip. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, theories? Do you have any theories on what might happen? Um, well, probably, if, if I had to guess, there's there's – going to be some kind of chaos that happens because now that I guess his birthday has come, something's going to have to start happening. Um, may, uh, like, so Crowley was trying to convince Aziraphale to kill the kid. Maybe, maybe Aziraphale will actually try. It, it's possible. I mean, I don't know because he was really, when, when he brought it up, he was like, I've never killed anything, you know? So it's, I would say possible, but unlikely. 
Um, I think they're just going to have to band together. It's probably going to be more like a like a buddy cop thing where they're 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 banding together looking for him. Um, and uh, I, I think that's... And they're they're probably going to have to go talk to to those nuns again. Um, well, the order was destroyed. Disbanded, yeah. Yeah, the order but, was disbanded, and the, the place was uh, set on fire. Yeah, I mean, well, it was disbanded, but they weren't killed. This so, is I mean, true. So maybe they, they, they tracked down the nuns. Yeah, I want to say they could, they could, they could probably track some down and, and try to figure out what happened. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it's possible. You know, we'll we'll see what what comes. But uh, so that's that's our take. I really enjoyed this episode. I think. Uh, all the acting is done. It's a little BBC cheesy. Um, it, which did throw me off at first, but just because I wasn't really expecting that. Right. Um, but once once I like kind of realized what that was, within the first five minutes, essentially, yeah. I was like, all right, I, that's, I'm fine with this, and this is what it is. Well, some people don't like the whole BBC cheesy comedy yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. Um, so if that's not your cup of tea, so to speak... Uh, this might not be the show for you, but I think it's it's great. I think it's wonderful. Um, if you like anything like Doctor Who, if you like Monty Python, if you like any sort of uh, British humor. I'll have to stop you there, because I've seen some Doctor Who, David Tennant's Doctor Who even, and I'm not really that big a fan of Doctor Who, but this I really like. Yeah, but you don't mind the BBC cheesiness either. For I guess... I don't mind it in this. I guess there are other things where I have minded it. Hmm. That's a discussion for another time. Yes. Which, <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm trying not to get too much into that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for now. We will continue doing this, what, about once a week? Yeah. Yeah, right. sounds good. And uh, hopefully, if you haven't checked it out, you'll check it out and you'll like it. Uh, let us know what your thoughts on the show are, if you have any questions, if you have any theories. Uh, and also don't forget to like and subscribe to our channels and let us know that you're watching. And if there's anything you're interested in seeing us do, let us know. Uh, on that note, Brendan, I am ready to go. Do you have any fun notes? Uh, no. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. All right. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>